video is going to take you through the steps of chi-square. This is the second problem on the homework paper after the first day. Um, the first one has to fill in the blank. So I just want to take you through the steps. So we have our contingency table of observed values. This is what happened in actual. And then our first step is to write the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. So the null is always that gender and season are independent. So there's your gender, there's your season, they're independent. And then the alternative is just the are not independent. Don't write dependent. That's your first step, step one in the process. Step two, calculate degrees of freedom. And your calculator will tell you, but Let's practice showing the work because they'll ask you to verify this sometimes. Rows minus one times columns minus one. So there's two rows. And there are one, two, three, four columns. So degrees of freedom is one times three. And that is going to affect where we look at on our table to get our value. Quote the significance level required. So at a 1% at a significance level. Step four, write the rejection inequality. This is probably the most important step that you actually write this and take some time or you're gonna get yourself confused in the middle of the problem. So chi squared calculated greater than the critical value from the table. Well, they give you the critical value for this test as 11.34. And you can verify that on your chart. And we're at a 1% level and three degrees of freedom. So 1%, three degrees of freedom. Um, the other paper chart would be 1%, three degrees of freedom. Just lining those things up. This one's a little easier to read, okay? They also give you that in the table. You won't have to look it up on an, on an application problem, but uh, you do need to understand where it comes from because you'll be using values like that. Okay, so this is called a rejection inequality because if this is true, we reject the null hypothesis. And that's our whole conclusion thing. Okay, so step five is find chi-squared. We'll do another one of these um, the long way, but right now the way you're going to find chi-squared is using your calculator. So when we say chi-squared, we're finding this calculated value. So go to the matrix, whichever one you want. Put in your numbers. So two rows, four columns. Put your numbers in. Make sure you put your numbers in right. And then I put them in matrix A. You can put them in whatever matrix you want to. Go back and do stat, test, chi-squared test. Get my chi-squared number. So my chi-squared is 2.56. And the P value is 0.465. So we're gonna make a, a conclusion. And so 2.56 is not greater than 11.34. So we accept the null hypothesis. That means that gender is not related to favorite season.
You could also say it's less than, but I like to say not greater than. So just saying we're disagreeing with this. Um, and then we can use p-values to verify our decision. That's actually step seven. So the rejection inequality also would be true if p is less than 0 0.05 or 0 0.01, I think was our 1% level. So if you notice, the, this is the opposite. So our p-value is 0.465, definitely not less than 0 0.01. It's way greater than. So that confirms our conclusion. So if the p-value and the chi-squared value, the inequalities are opposite, that, that's what you want to have. You want to have chi-squared greater than and p less than. In this case, we had chi-squared was less than and p was greater than, so we accept h0. And so the two variables are independent. If you wanted to figure out where the expected values were in your table, you go back to the matrix, and I stored them in B. The calculator put them there. There's my values. If you want to make that little table right here, sometimes they're going to ask you to verify a value. So like this is 9, 11, 12.6. So they might say verify that 15.4. That 15.4 comes from the row total, which is 28, times, or the column total, which is 28, times the row total, which is 19, 25, 45, and divided by the overall total which is a hundred and I didn't total all those up but let's check and see if that works so 28 times 45 divided by 100 12.6 so we verified this value right here I guess I did the one right above it if you wanted to verify uh, the one below there it would be the row total 29, 39, 55, and the column total, which is 28. So similar calculation, only 55, 15.4, verified. You can always check back in your calculator to see if those match up. So there's the full process. We'll keep doing these. Um, keep this step-by-step -step paper with you. If you want to recopy them in smaller form, that's fine but that's gonna help you figure it out as well.